My name's Ian McCormick, and the story goes back really to the 1920s, not for me, but for my parents, because they met, first of all, at the opening of the Glasgow University Scottish Nationalist Association, which was the forerunner of the Scottish National Party originally. It was a while before they got married, but they got married in 1938, and I was born in 1939. Now, by that time, the SNP had taken part in a whole variety of by-elections and elections unsuccessfully. In 1942, the party split when my father left it because of the attitude of some of the members of the party to the Second World War. So the first time I was really politically aware was after the war in 1948, when my father stood for election in the town of Paisley, with the help of the Liberals and the Conservatives, I believe. Anyway, he nearly got in, but, but didn't. But that was when I became fully aware of politics as part of Scottish nationalism and part of the whole Home Rule movement. In the old days, it was usually called Home Rule in Scotland, and it really meant that to a great extent. I think I'm right in saying, in fact, I know I'm right in saying, that my father's view of devolution, nationalism and home rule was that Scotland should be completely self-governing, but not necessarily self-governing so far as foreign affairs and defence were concerned. These were not vitally important from his point of view. From his point of view, it was Scottish people running Scotland. That was what was important. He went on from there to build up a movement called Scottish Convention because he then realised that you would have to broaden the appeal of the whole Home Rule movement to include other people than people who were actually in the Scottish National Party. Therefore, this was an all-party movement that was one of its great strengths and one of its great weaknesses. They started a petition known as the Scottish Covenant, which attained two million signatures in the late 40s, early 50s. My father genuinely thought, I think, that that was enough to persuade anyone that Scotland ought to have very substantial self-government. But of course it wasn't enough. And (laughs) I think he was shattered, actually, yes. That was early 50s. Various things happened in the early 50s. He was elected as Lord Rector of Glasgow University by the great nationalist upsurge in the university. Not surprising, perhaps, considering that's where the University Scottish Nationalist Association began. And then, of course, in 1950, Ian Hamilton and his colleagues managed to remove the Stone of Destiny from Westminster Abbey, which, again, was widely regarded with some pride, I think, by most Scots people. So these were the things that were happening then. The last time my father stood in an actual election was in 1959, and I remember that because... I was still at university at the time, and he was standing in the borders. I had been down there playing rugby shortly before, so I went down and spoke for him at meetings. He came second, but again, not quite enough. And that was really the end, because my father died in 1961, two years later. And that really takes us on, I think, to a totally different sphere, if you like, of the national movement, which I'd like to talk about later.